Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And in today's episode, the topic is, was Doc Rivers the problem all along with the Clippers last year? So that's the topic I want to get into in today's video. But before we get into that, I want you guys to please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Also, make sure you go ahead and check out Dreamers Pro Max, an online sports community place where you can go and start basketball discussions chat live during games and so many other cool things if you guys are interested in that be sure to check that out we have that linked in the description below and also make sure you go ahead and click the join button to join the channel to become a member of our channel and to receive loyalty badges from us so make sure you go ahead and do that anyway so let me get into this topic here and first of all let me preface all of my comments by saying this i'm not blaming a hundred percent of this of what happened last year in the playoffs on doc rivers let me just say that Secondly, other, you know, some of the players that were on the Clippers roster, including my favorite player, Kawhi Leonard, played a role. So I just want to kind of preface my comments from that but, you know, before I start. So some people don't start jumping in their feelings and start jumping in the comment section and say, you're going to overlook Paul George. Let me just say that now to begin. So anyway, last year was supposed to be a magical year for the Clippers. We all remember this. Um, it was supposed to be. They had just signed um, one of the best players in the world, in my opinion, the best basketball player in the world and Kawhi Leonard, who was fresh. Um, off of a you know an NBA championship, a Finals MVP with the Toronto Raptors, helping them win their first title ever in the history of that organization. So they were able to get him. Um, then they were able to sign one of the best two-way players in basketball, in Paul George, who I think the season prior finished top three in MVP voting and top three in defensive uh, player of the year voting. So he was one of the he was considered one of the best two-way players in, uh, in the NBA, and, and he had a sensational season at that time with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Although when he went to the playoffs. Uh, it was a different story, right? Now, the Clippers team that they had the year prior before signing Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, they had players like Lou Williams, Montrez Harrell, Patrick Beverly. Um, I think um, Tobias Harris, if I'm not mistaken, he was there and some other player. I think that Danilo Gallinari was on the roster, if I'm not mistaken. And that team played a lot of inspired basketball and it ended up taking the eventual or the, the you know, the Western Conference champs, the Golden State Warriors, a fully loaded golden state Warriors. it took them to six games in round one right so you know they put up they put up and up they put up a, f f a fantastic effort and a lot of people were just like well if this team with these players with a, with a bunch of role players that know their job they did their jobs um excuse me at a high level were able to take the golden state Warriors to six games just imagine what a team like this could do with the addition of Kawhi Leonard and Paul George right so that was the that was the overall um that was the overall sentiment and as well you know you had players off the bench like Lou Williams former six man of the year and all of this stuff and of course with a championship coach and Doc Rivers this team was ultimately supposed to be destined to at least make it to the NBA finals right that was that was that's what that's what it was and of course Doc Rivers has always been viewed in a favorable sort of way by generally the public and the media right because he's a very friendly guy um he seems to answer a lot of the questions that the media gives him he seems to be very available he, he seems to say the right things on social issues so a lot of people like him in media a lot of people defend him in, 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 uh you know in, in media and a lot of people give him you know give doc rivers the benefit of the doubt to a certain extent right you rarely hear people criticize doc river especially media members right so they go into the playoffs last year and what happens in round one they had sort of a scare in round one by Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks. And he ended up taking them to six games. But ultimately, I think Kawhi Leonard just said to hell with this. And um, we're just, we, we, I'm, I'm just going to will my will this team to the second round. And essentially, that's what happened because he was their best player by far. He played the best by far. He was actually the only Clipper that got better in the playoffs as opposed to all the other Clippers. This includes Paul George. Paul George was averaging like 18 points per game in the first round. Lou Williams and these guys were doing it. But they were all... Um, I'm pulling the Houdini, Montrez Harold didn't do anything. Just go back and look at the numbers, right? Just go back and look at the numbers. But when they got to the second round, that's when things just just went awry. And that's when I that's when I believe Doc Rivers totally got exposed. The Clippers were able to get a 3-1 lead on the Denver Nuggets. And somehow, some way, they ended up blowing that 3-1 lead and losing a game seven. Because of Doc Rivers' refusal to make adjustments to sit certain players, try to play other players. It was a disaster. And we all remember in that game seven, Kawhi Leonard had a poor game seven. Paul George had a forgettable game seven. And ultimately, they ended up losing that series. And it was an embarrassment for Kawhi Leonard, for Paul George, for everyone. But at the end of that series, 
although the blame there was a lot to go around but at the end of that series um steve balmer ultimately this ultimately decided that listen this wasn't the guy for the job and uh doc rivers and the clippers ultimately ended up parting ways so when doc rivers left he was able to get a job rather quickly with the Philadelphia 76ers and some other some media members are like, you know, they didn't like the way things was handled with Doc Rivers. You know, it wasn't fair. The bubble wasn't fair. They would have liked to give him a, a second chance and all these different things. So when they asked Doc Rivers about what transpired during his time with the Clippers in the playoffs, Doc, Doc Rivers said, um, Ty Lu was sitting next to me. So he better hope it's not adjustments. It ain't going to be much different. Those are Doc Rivers' words referring to what happened in the Orlando bubble this season, you know, the season when he coached the team. Those were his words, right? And people came out against Paul George. They came out against Kawhi Leonard, saying that Paul George and Kawhi Leonard threw them over, threw Doc Rivers under the bus. Shannon Sharp was one of the people that said, oh, they threw Doc under the bus. They cost him his job, X, Y, and Z. They said all of these different things, right? And this year, what happened? Another repeat. But in this case, you can't blame it on Kawhi Leonard. You can't blame it on Paul George. You can't blame it on any of these guys anymore because Doc Rivers goes to the Philadelphia 76ers and they had, they have one of the most embarrassing collapses you'll witness by any team. The Philadelphia 76ers choked away that series against the Atlanta Hawks. They choked it away. They had the best player in Joel Embiid, one of the people that they, one of the players that everyone thought should have been the regular season MVP. And what does Doc Rivers do again? He chokes away another series. Then, when people were questioning whether or not if uh, they should have Ben Simmons in, you know, in the game late in quarters, Doc Rivers went out there and said, "If you question whether or not." Ben Simmons should be on the floor. It means you're a novice at best in basketball and you know nothing about basketball. Those were his comments. Newsflash, Ben Simmons can't shoot. If the whole world can see Ben Simmons can't shoot, why can't you see it? But Doc Rivers didn't want to hurt the confidence of Ben Simmons. So you want to keep him in the game. The exact same thing that he did when, he's, when he was with the Clippers in the playoffs, he kept on playing Lou Williams, who was playing like garbage. He kept on playing Montrez Harrell, who was getting manhandled by Nikola Jokic. He kept on going to these guys. He refused to bench certain guys. He wouldn't give Joe Kim Noah uh, some run in the playoffs. He wouldn't try other players. It's that same stubbornness to have, the, because things have to, you know, things have to be done your way. They have to be done your way. It's like, you don't want to win. You just want to be right. Is that same stubbornness that cost them this series. And you're there playing Ben Simmons, who was shooting 30% from the free throw line. And, and I just heard yesterday, he had the worst shooting percentage, I think, from the free throw line from the field in NBA history in the playoffs. This is the guy Doc Rivers was was was, was um, um, vouching for. No, no, we got to play. And then after they lost the game, they asked him, do you think Ben Simmons can be a starting point guard on the championship team? He says he doesn't know. So you don't know now? Something that everybody's been complaining about. Listen, this is Doc Rivers. This is who he has been. This was the Doc Rivers that the Clippers had to endure last season. Now, as I said in the beginning of this video, I'll say it again. There's plenty of blame to go around, but guess what? Coaching matters, and Ty Lu proved it to you. The core is still the same. Paul George is still there. Kawhi Leonard is still there. They, they got rid of some other pieces, but they still have the Patrick Beverly. These guys are still there. And they were able to make the breakthrough. You know why? Because Ty Lu was coaching his tail off he has been the coach of the he, if, if if they had to give the coach of the playoffs he's been the best coach these playoffs no question about it no one has made more adjustments than Ty Lu. no one he has been he has done a masterful job with the Clippers getting them this far and their best player Kawhi Leonard has has has, has, has missed the last three games in the playoffs Ty Lu has done a fantastic job now if we look at Doc Rivers Doc Rivers coaching history i'm going to give you guys some 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 data here that's going to astonish some of you doc rivers hung his hat on the fact that he won a title in 2008 with the boston celtics with kevin garnett ray allen and paul pierce okay he won that title with them since then let me give you his his numbers his performance in the playoffs since then the next year he lost in the conference semifinals 
Two years later, he lost in the NBA Finals when he went back and lost to the Lakers. Then the year after, he lost with the, he lost in, in the conference semifinals, lost in the conference finals, lost in the first round, lost in the conference finals, lost in the conference finals, lost in the first round, lost in the first round, missed the playoffs, lost in the first round, lost in the conference semifinals, lost in the conference semifinals. Guys, in the last ten years, looking at this data, Doc Rivers has lost in the conference semifinals one, two, three, four, five, six times. Six times. So it wasn't just Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. It also had something to do with the coach. And Doc Rivers now is being exposed as being a coach that's very stubborn, that's stuck in his ways, that has to do things his way. And he was sitting there vehemently, excuse me, defending Ben Simmons. And now at the end of the game, people are saying that Ben Simmons should be traded. It's like, are you kidding me? You had this guy in there late in games. Ben Simmons has no confidence in his shooting ability. We did a video two years ago saying this. It's been two years Ben Simmons has been the same player. He has not changed. We did a video. We posted it on the channel that we shot close to two years ago. If you go look at the quality of our videos, the way we were delivering content, you'll see that there was a progression. We've, we've gotten better. So you're supposed to get better over time at your craft if you're, if you're truly working on it. That hasn't been the case for Ben Simmons. That hasn't been the case. And Doc Rivers, again, is part of another collapse in the playoffs. Again. And it looks like the common denominator here is him. Is him. So, I've given you an example of him in the Clippers. I've given you an example of him being, you know, of his coaching resume over probably the last 10 years or so. It's him. So, what I want to know from you guys is, do you think Doc Rivers was the problem with the Clippers last year? Or do you think that, listen, it's something else? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Again, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day and catch you guys on the next episode.